Shh, don't tell mum. <laughs> Hello, Hello and, and welcome, welcome to Shh, don't, don't tell mum. My name's Bonnie. And I'm Jamie. And this is the number one parenting podcast in the world. <laughs> Please don't Google that. She gets that extra, just, you know, extra whoop to do at the end. There is a bit of va va voom at the end of each and every podcast introduction, but we love it, don't we? We do. And you know what? I've got my tea here and I'm ready for some really good chats today. I feel Ooh. like this is our date time when we get to do our little pod. Well, it is date night tonight. It is date night. What are we doing tonight? Thursday is date night because mum has the baby. And also, we'll do it on Thursdays. <laughs> If you've seen fun with Dick and Jane, then you know what we're talking about. Inside joke, don't worry about it. So, how have you been? Okay. It's a solid answer for a podcast. I like that. No, can okay. I just say, we've got to pay a huge friggin' bill because I keep going over potholes and for some annoying reason... You heard it here first. She's actually physically admitting it right now. Well, we snapped the physical wheel. Now, get we, this. We? We? Who snapped the wheel? The council for not fixing the potholes in the first place. Who drive over the pothole? Oh, my God. It was, like, in the middle of the night at, like, 2 a.m., number one. Number two, I think we should send the bill to the council. Don't you agree? Like, if You should you be able to over... send the bill to the council if it's, like, a pothole or, you know, nails in the ground that have come off of, like, building sites. The building sites should be liable. £1,100 we've had to pay altogether. For one wheel. For one wheel. It's Absolutely ludicrous. It wasn't even worth the amount that the gig was. I'm on minus 400. But I'm very chirpy otherwise. You are chirpy. I like it. Thanks. I'm a bit tired though. I'm hungry. So, you know, mixed emotions today. Mixed emotions in the booth. So, we'll kick things straight off with TikTok turnoffs because it's been a wild ride the past two weeks for TikTok. (laughs) Especially as... Tommy Fury fought Jake Paul. Yes, and he won. Thank he did. God. I'm kind of happy that he won just because it will shut the smugness up out of Jake Paul a little bit. But this is where my TikTok turnoff slides into today. I don't know how I feel about YouTube boxing. Why? I just don't know how I feel about it. Like, there's a lot of positive response about it and stuff, but I just don't know if I really like it. Mm. That's my TikTok turnoff for this week. I'm a little bit turned off by. All the YouTubers thinking, you know, what's the next best thing for my career? I'm going to fight another YouTuber in a boxing ring. I don't know. Mm. Is this the next step in our evolution as online creators? Bit silly. Go on. What's yours? Well, I think there's room for everyone in this world. So if it, the problem is, is you don't. Now you're wanna, making me sound like a bigot. <laughs> no, but the thing is, is you don't want to pigeonhole yourself. Well, I think yourself. there's room for everyone. <laughs> it's true. So mean. No, it's true because when you think about it, like he he might have started as a YouTuber, but his goal in life might have always wanted to be a fighter, but he couldn't get there because he didn't have the context. So we thought, I'm going to start a YouTube channel about something completely different, and then I'll get to do my dream eventually. It's like us going through when we speak to our. I speak to my sister all the time about it, and I say what do you want to be what do you want to be she's like I want to be all these things and I'm like you got to focus on one and she's like but why do I have to it's true you can do anything that you want to do in the world and he might of we don't know but he might have wanted to be a fighter life coach Jamie steps into the ring okay let me let me ask you a quick question then what was my TikTok what did (laughs) well no what before we get to your TikTok turn off what did Jake Paul do before he did YouTube boxing he did YouTube and what did he do before that I don't know, because I don't follow him. But if I did, I would tell you. Why? What did he do? He was on the Disney Channel. Oh, was he? So I don't think he always wanted to be a boxer. But you don't know. (laughs) Then he would have trained as a boxer if he always wanted to be a boxer. Like, you know what? I'm seeing, okay, so this is one of my turn-offs. I'm seeing a lot of people on social media turn around and being like, all these Gen Z people thinking they're all spiritual and shit. Get a fucking life. All this shit. Okay, if people are on a spiritual journey, let them do it. Because it's none of your business what they freaking do. They just say it's a type of person that, of course, goes to Bali and then becomes very spiritual and all of this Jamie shit, Jamie feels right? really personally attacked by this. I do. I actually feel personally... Because I want to actually start looking into healing. The doors are opening for new opportunities of what I've been doing recently and going to Bali and experiencing that. I went to see a shaman and the shaman turned around and he went, you would have been a healer a lot earlier on in your career if you didn't grow up in a city. And I was like, ah, interesting. And he was like, it's because you're surrounded by people who don't believe in it very much. And I think now we are just waking up to 
so much more in life and what is actually happening. And there's a lot of people on social media that shit on that idea for Westerners that are in this country who live in a city or in LA or wherever and they're just like, oh, you're becoming one of those. Let them do what the fuck they want to do and stop slating them on social media. You look like an idiot. I'm sorry, you look like an idiot. And I've seen a few people that I follow on social media that they look down on people like that and it's like... Oh my God, you're just as bad as the person that judges Meghan Markle or something like that. You yeah, it's are. never kind. It's never kind to judge anyone or, or you know, make a preconceived like notion of someone before you actually get to know them on a personal level. Um, yeah, I mean, if you fall into any kind of stereotype, then I mean, it just is what it is, and people are always going to have opinions, and negative opinions seem to get a lot of traction on social media. So a lot of people like to have negative opinions because they get a dopamine hit from having a negative opinion online because people watch their stuff and comment. And has there been any comments recently on our social medias personally that annoyed you this week? I don't think. Not really this week. We've actually had quite a lot of positivity come our way, which is always nice. And it's always nice for a change on social media for people to go. I've, uh, You know what? We've had some really nice comments recently, especially on our YouTube, because there's been a few people saying, I've now watched this couple or this family for this amount of time, you know, for, you know, the past few weeks. And I actually really like them. And it's, that was a really nice comment because someone's actually said, I've taken the time to watch a bunch of their stuff over a consecutive weeks, whether it's YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, whatever. And then they've turned around and said, I actually really like them. I think they're nice. And I, that being a nice person is such a, a vital part of, of how I try to perceive, uh, not perceive, but how I try to be. I try to be a nice person mm-hmm. as much as I can, uh, where, no matter who you are. And so to hear that kind of, resonates for me and makes me feel like I'm doing something right and it's nice and it makes you want to keep making the content you know that's one of the other things because at the end of the day we aren't getting paid for this there's no endorsements with this we're just doing it because we enjoy talking and I think that was where I think that's where podcasts originated from at the same time they just wanted to be able to have a space where they could just speak and people could come on board like we were with a friend the other day I said to her afterwards, I said, it's so refreshing to speak to somebody that relates to us as parents because we're all locked away in our little homes, like being parents and not realising what is normal and what isn't normal. And we're very much living the norm, but nobody really talks about it a lot. You just see the glam and the glitz on social media. So it was just quite refreshing. And to have this space to be able to do that is really special. Somebody did say, though, on um, YouTube... Oh, what have you seen? They were like, Jamie, I don't agree about the Happy Valley thing. Okay, I didn't give it a chance because I couldn't understand what the woman was saying, okay? If I understood what she was saying, I would have given it a chance. But unfortunately, these little old tiny ears here, as you can see, cannot really understand accents. Give me an accent now and I will try and do it. Go on. And you'll try and do yeah. it. Oh, my God, this is going to go so horribly wrong and I'm so all in. Okay, to do a Russian accent. No, you have to do it and I have to impersonate it. Oh, I to, okay. I um, pinpoint it because I'm so dyslexic. If I was to do a Russian I'm, accent. I've, I went to acting school, by the way. Really paid off my, my private acting school. Thanks for that. Appreciate um, that. I would say uh, I'm going to leave the house and I'm going to go to Sainsbury's down the road. Okay, I'm going to be good at this. I'm going to leave the house and I'm going to uh, go to St. Breeze. You sound like you're from Colombia. Oh, do I? I don't know about that. I'll give you another one. Um, turn out of the house left and go round the roundabout and then come back. Turn around the house and go left and go round the roundabout because that's where you need to go. <laughs> that was like Dutch and... Don't know, a little bit of something else sprinkled in there, right? <laughs> <Let's>, <laughs> did you know what, what? Do you know what accent I was doing? Yeah. What was it? Irish. Okay, it was Irish. Nice. Irish. Um, uh, but I you... always, if you did Scottish, I wouldn't have. I would. I, yeah. I get them mixed up. But you know what? I can do very, very well. You're going to say Indian, and I'm not going to get you to do it. <laughs> no, no, not Indian. Okay. I can do Southern accents really well. Oh, you think you can? I don't understand what you're saying there. <laughs> yeah, see, but I anyone can. can do that. Yeehaw. Uh, <laughs> no, I can do that. You try at home. Come on. I don't understand what you're doing here. We're going to, you know why? Because there was a kid at school 
school when I went to school in LA and he was from Texas and I became really friendly with him and I was like you have the most amazing accent and so he would help me with my Texan accent your Texan accent okay I'm gonna give you one more and we'll see if you can actually close out on a good one go out to the shops get a few beers come back and we'll watch a great match of footy on the TV Go out to the shops and... <laughs> <laughs> I literally oh can't. I go can't. out to the shops? <laughs> and we can go. You know what? I can do... Oh, my God. I literally can't. You can't, can't. You can't. can't. Yeah, so let's let's, let's hit that nail there. on the head right there. Congrats. Yes. Um, so good TikTok turn-offs, though. That was good. I think that something that you're really interested in right now and leading into the upcoming week is the new season of Outer Banks is out. Oh, my God. That's what we can watch on date we night We can tonight. totally watch that tonight, date night. Um, what are you most excited for and who's your favourite character? And like, what, should we do a little synopsis for people at home who may not have seen the show? So, it's on Netflix. Can we just add something here? It's if you are a millennial like we are. So, for instance, I was in love with One Tree Hill and the OC. And you know, it's so funny. Barney's mate was over recently. She was a lot younger than me, and we were having like a date night, couples. Date My night. friend's girlfriend. Yeah. And I said to her, "Ah, oh, so what? You know, as you do, what sitcoms are you really into? Because you're trying to break the." The cold. Break the ice. ice. Break the cold. <laughs> <laughs> what comes out I of your know. head? Sorry. I don't understand. Do you think of that or do you just let words fall hey, out please, of your mouth? Please, please. <laughs> I'm so dyslexic. Please. It gets worse. I don't know why. I think since I've had a baby, it's all muddled in there. Okay. Anyway, and I said to her, I was like, so what series do you watch? Have you ever watched The O.C.? And she was like, what's The O.C.? Dum, dum, dum. Obviously, The Fear. And as a big fan of The O.C., and they've even got a podcast out, everybody who's in their, you know, 30s and upwards know what The O.C. was. It was absolutely primetime best show on TV at one point. For I think it was on MTV, or was it on E4? Is it was e- on MTV, and then I think that the reruns were on E4. Is E4 even a thing anymore? No, I don't oh think it God. is. I think it's just Channel 4 now. We don't have TV, by the way. Yeah, we watch we're guessing. Netflix and everything. We just watch... They're no, like streaming services. Yeah, streaming yeah, services. Yeah, yeah. We're streamers. Streamers, babe. We're streamers. Everyone calls me a streamer. And then, um, <laughs> if you haven't seen the OC or One Tree Hill, you, this won't have any relevance to you. But it's very similar. To- <laughs> it's relevance, babe, not relevance. <laughs> Fuck! I'm in a glass cage of emotion. <laughs> <laughs> Someone help. Send help. <laughs> Get me out of here. Oh my Honestly, God. okay, right. No, seriously. Yeah, let I'm me being finish. serious. Yeah. Out of Banks <laughs> is just like that. I had all the feels. Anyway. Fuck. Okay, well, Out of Banks I is basically the, the Goonies, but in modern day times with teenage kids. It's really fun. It's relatable. It's, you know, kids who are outcasts and they club together to try and find a treasure. That's basically what it's about. Go watch it. It's really fun. And the new season, season three, is out on Netflix right now. And the stakes are getting higher with every season and the cliffhangers are getting better. What's a show other than Out of Banks or a film that you've seen recently that people at home should watch? I love a documentary. We will watch that. That one, the other oh, day. The Murdochs. Murder, murderous Murdochs no, or something? No, it or didn't mur- have a finish. It's like making a murderer. That's oh. a brilliant documentary. But at but the end. it doesn't have a finish. Yeah. Like, guys, don't release documentary if you have nothing to follow up with. I'm sorry, it needs to have a start, middle and end. And actually, after we watched that, I watched a documentary called Athlete A. That's what I was trying to... Is that what you were going to yeah. talk about? And so it's about the... Uh, I was going to say chili, does they're not? The US gymnastics team and how they were, it's pretty awful to talk about here, but yeah, they were all molested by the mm. doctor over, it was over 500 cases of molestation he was by like this the, one guy. He was like the main doctor, right? He was right, just the for... doctor for all US gymnastics, you know, at the highest level. And mate, it's the most fucked up story ever. The thing is, but, is yeah. Da, 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 da. But we forgot the pounds. I know, and it's going to be so loud if we drop pounds in that. We might need to get one that's a bit quieter. But you know what I do think? I ding, think ding, every ding, ding. swear word that we say, we should donate to a certain charity. Okay. So we need to... No, decide. not every swear word. Once it gets to a certain point of being full, that gets donated. So, Jamie Lisa, mm-hmm. Rocket, our son, who we both love, mm-hmm. who is amazing. I'm starting to get to a point where... 
you know, he's one years old. He's one. He's one year old now, and. Something that I'm starting to have difficulty differentiating between with something in his personality is now a cry for help and a cry for attention. As kids get older, they they learn behaviors. Oh, I get attention when I cry. So now if I cry, I know that mom and dad will appear. Now, we have this amazing system in place that me and you both do where when he cries, we give him five or 10 minutes when it's, you know, in the middle of the night or something to see mm-hmm. if he resettles. But in the daytime, recently, he's crying a lot more. And it's like a moaning kind of cry, like, ah, I want attention or something like that. So how are we going to tackle this? What's your thoughts on it? Mm. And, you know, I kind of just wanted to chat with you about that because it's something that I just really don't want to get worse because I feel like it could create strain in the household he's gonna start learning about yeah behaviors and languages etc like he knows his name you say rocky he turns and he looks at you so he's actually starting to pick up certain words as well i think he knows dog and things like that but you know like how parents turn around and go no don't mind go in a corner stand in the corner that kind of thing i don't think that's the parenting technique that i want to go down but we need to all be on the same page because he goes to like our mother-in-law's on Thursdays and then he's going to go to my mum's and then he has nursery. He's getting raised by a community of people. Yeah, He's with us for a certain amount of time, but I feel like everybody needs to be on the same wavelength when it comes to raising our boy because at the end of the day... He's going to be influenced. He's like they're like sponges at their age, at one years old. They're going to take in so many influences. There needs to be basically what you're also, saying is they need to have consistency, consistency across the board. Across the board. Yeah. But the thing is, he won't sit down and eat his food properly unless there's something on the TV. Uh, or there's those kids that have to eat and watch an iPad. They always say, "Are you going to be that iPad mom that just gives them and gives an iPad?" Sometimes we are. Sometimes, those iPads. yeah. When we went to Bali, that's what we did. Yeah. We we were like, okay, make sure we have the iPad, and we went out, and then that was what we were prepped with, and then we came home, and he expected the iPad to be there every time we ate. Like our friend yesterday yeah. turned around and went. He just sometimes just wants to go in the the high chair because he knows if he goes in the high chair, he gets, he the, gets iPad. the iPad. Yeah, so that's, that's the learned behavior. Issue. That's yeah. a learned behavior. But I think he's just crying right now is because we are so busy as parents, and when he's with everyone else, they give him so much attention. So yeah. he's not used to it when he's with us to turn around and be like, "Why is mummy and daddy not paying us attention?" Because we've got to do everything around them. That's why they say grandparents when they have. They have these kids from their kids. They say it's a completely different relationship because they can be 100%. They have all the time, yeah. Or 100% focused attention on the kid all day. So and like, you and me both yeah. work with having a baby as well. Yeah. We work from home. So he has to put her around while we're working. So I, I don't know. I don't know how we're going to tackle it. But we will update you on that. One of the reasons I wanted to bring it up was just because I'm feeling like it's it's a period of I, a period of sensitivity in this kind of field of parenting because I don't want to do it wrong and then create a rod for our back going forward so it's really good for us to tackle it together and I think the most important thing that you've touched on is just consistency across the board whatever happens at our house happens at mum's house happens at your mum's house and also happens at nursery for instance so, one yeah. thing that my mum always does which I tell her always not do it is when we when he cries in the middle of the night you have to go in and you have to not say anything and you have to stay silent Keep but it she all finds really it calm. really hard to do that so she goes and she's like hey rocket hey rocket oh my god you're oh, so rocket. cute you're and we're amazing. like christine shut up <laughs> shut up <laughs> he needs silence. He's, now, he's now like oh my god is it time to wake up woohoo and then we you know it's 3 a.m and he's, and he's crying like, <laughs> Yeah, Goes why are you leaving again. me? So, yeah, okay, well, I guess we'll tackle it together, so that's good. Oh, he's such a good kid, but he's been really sick, and he's still got this frigging cough. Honestly, yeah, the it's cough like is bad. one thing after another, and then we go to the doctors, they're like, you could give him antibiotics, but maybe not, and then we go... Oh, do we really want to weaken his immune system? Do we really? He literally sounds like he smokes 20 a day. It's, it's actually mental. 